Hi everyone, well done for reaching the end of my course and I hope you've learned something and even more if you've you've enjoyed uh, bits of it or you know you've you felt a sense of satisfaction from learning something. Uh, you know being a first course in SPSS you shouldn't have expected too much. As I said I do this course over an entire day and people have lots of questions to ask me which is why it like, takes a whole day. Uh, you've not been able to do that but hopefully with this Udemy kind of uh, platform you can ask questions in the forum and I'll be happy to um, answer them so long as they're around about this yeah not about your projects or something like that which is not related to the course material here um, so it's very important to get a firm grounding in um, data and the variables because more complex methods later on um, you're gonna just we're gonna automatically assume you kind of know what type of variables are out there and be very familiar with uh, normal handling of data okay so that's why this has been very important um, the next natural kind of question students ask is you know, I've entered my data what do I do next what kind of what kind of uh, tools are appropriate for for me you know for my analysis well that really depends on that answer depends on your hypotheses so when you set out to do a project or you know you're examining some data set you've got some hypotheses in your mind you know some statements you want to see whether the data supports the statements in your mind so I'm, what I'm going to do is write down some some typical statements that you might have you might have as hypotheses and then point you to the kind of right tool to use so knowing the right tools depends on a your hypotheses and b the nature of the variables which you now know scale nominal and ordinal all right and students usually don't know one or both of these questions so obviously they have no idea what kind of tools they can use and also they might not not uh, have learned enough tools to know that they actually exists something exists for their needs okay suppose let's do the first one there is a relationship between a and b suppose you've got that as your hypothesis you know where a and b is something well we've seen already in this course that if a and b are categorical categorical versus categorical we you can use the chi square test for association if we've got something that's scale and scale two scale things we use something called the Pearson's correlation if I have something that is scale versus something that is ordinal it's just something that's like yeah scale versus categorical ordinal we use something called Spearman's row and that's correlation as well if we have something that's scale versus something that's nominal what we would do then is we need to convert that scale into something that's categorical so then it would be categorical versus categorical which can go back to use the chi-square test. As an example suppose the scale is age just scale you know any old age so um, then we could kind of categorize it by using the recode button and forming groups for example we could group age as uh, up to 18, 18 to 25, 25 to 35, 35 to 45 and over 45 for example that's what I mean by converting scale into categorical variable which you are able to do that deals with the first type of statement next common type of statement is people want to assess whether there's a difference in population means between A and B is the difference between two groups that's another way of saying it here we've got the option of a t-test Man Whitney, Wilcoxon. Why there are three is because, as I've told you before, hy hypotheses tests uh, requires assumptions. So this is where we need to use tests with some assumptions for these tests. An extension to the p difference in population means across several groups, say like two or more, but usually we can do three or more because if it's two then we can just use one of these three here three or more groups we can use what's called ANOVA method which stands for acronym for analysis of variance or we can use uh, a regression by the way here we can also use regression but not usually uh, people don't bother okay so that's we want to see if there's a difference in means across several groups in other words another way of saying it we want to compare um, different groups for one measure thing and the thing that we're seeing if there's a difference between the groups is scale 
Um, for example, uh, let's take an example from education. Uh, does the style of teaching affect exams, students' exam score? Um, we might, so the thing being recorded here, that scale would be exam score. And then um, method of teaching would be the category. So here, let's create three categories. We could have a teacher that um, uh, uses the method of praising the class, a uh, opportunity, one that kind of um, punish the class and one that is a control group so we can compare then the teaching method on a student's um, exam score if there is one okay so that would be an example of ANOVA. And ANOVA is very common in experiments it's actually built for where you've got data from experiments so if you've collected data from an experiment if you're a psychologist if you've done a medical study uh, that, that's more like that's going to be ANOVA. And then the last one is where you study cause and effect type relationships. Uh, that's to say that you want to make statement like, oh, you know, I've got something here that depends on this and this and this factor. Uh, for example, um, let's you know, say, let's take another one from education. That exam score depends on time spent revising, but it won't only depend on time spent revising. It could depend on other things. It could depend on um, the, the type of subject it is. Is it a science or humanities? It could depend on your high school score, how well you did at high school, and so on. Okay, and regression is a very, very flexible tool. Um, so here, the type of variables, it can entertain all of them. So you could have a scale thing, something which is scale, that depends on other factors which are scale. Okay, so my example scale thing, my scale is the uh, exam score and it depends on, could depend on something else which is scale, could depend on, yeah, the time spent revising. You could have this thing that is scale, it could depend on mix of scale and categorical things and that's the first example I actually gave you where. And um, finally you could even have something which is categorical depending on a mix of scale and categorical stuff. For example, um, it could be like does someone subscribe to a Udemy video? Well it could depend on a whole number of things, the pricing of the course, it could depend on um, the type of uh, material it is, is it you know something that falls in social science or science and technology, education, humor, etc etc. So edge regression is very, very powerful and you know I've spent um, I run courses that last an entire year just on parts of regression. So regression is pretty much, if you're a social scientist, probably you need regression. If you're doing experiment type studies, you can also study it in the context of regression. In other words, regression does a whole load. Alright, so now you've got the sense of where you're going. So what's next for me? Well, what's next for me is if uh, this is an experiment uploading this course. Uh, depending how this goes, um, the part two will cover the difference in population means, it will cover correlation, it will cover one way ANOVA, so basic ANOVA, and it will go um, into an introductory level onto regression. So as I said, regression is a, is a very deep subject, it's not just to be covered in a 10 minute video. Okay, so again well done and I hope you've learned something new and at least you've got a bearing on where you're heading next.